been doing a little bit of research. In my research, I've been looking at successful shops on Etsy, more specifically looking at successful shops that have been open for less than a year. And I found five commonalities between all of these successful shops that I observed and what they're doing and leveraging in order to be making more money this year than ever with print on demand. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly what I found so that you can take these five strategies and implement them in your very own print on demand business. If you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Taylor. I'm a print on demand entrepreneur. Just this year alone, I've sold almost $100,000 on Etsy using a print on demand business model and have scaled my business to multi six figures in the last two years. If you like videos talking about print on demand, passive income and entrepreneurship, then be sure to boop the subscribe button down below. The first thing that print on demand sellers are doing this year is understanding demand more than ever. This is something that is incredibly important if you want to be successful with this business model, because if you are creating something that ultimately nobody is searching for and there is no demand for, you aren't going to see any sales on your products. When it comes to selling on Etsy, there's a few ways that you can find this demand just organically throughout the search results. Products that are currently in demand are going to have popular now badges, bestseller badges. You might even see when you click into a particular listing above the title, you'll see little banners such as that the item is in 20 plus carts or in X amount of carts, or maybe it has a certain amount of views in the last 24 hours. Sometimes you'll also see how many of that item have sold in the last 24 hours. All of these are really great ways to identify products that are of course in demand, but also products that people are purchasing. Now my top way for finding products that are in demand is actually using a research tool, specifically using Everbee. What I like to do with Everbee is utilize their product analytics tool. And what this looks like is often I will be browsing around the product category that I'm looking to sell in. For example, I sell a lot of apparel products and something that I might start by doing is just typing in women's shirts. What I like to do from here is go to all filters and scroll down to star seller. And I'm going to apply that filter. The next thing I'm going to do is replace the word star in my search bar with the word best. And this is going to help filter to just the best selling listings under this search term of women's shirts. Like I mentioned before, we can start to see listings that have popular now badges, bestseller badges, and we can even click into listings and look for those different types of badges above the title of the product. This one in particular has the in 20 plus carts. So clearly this is a listing that it also has a bestseller badge, but it is in multiple carts, which means people are likely also purchasing it. Back in the main search results, what I like to do with Everbee is use their product analytics tool. If you weren't familiar with Everbee, Everbee is a Chrome extension. So it is something that just kind of gets plugged into your browser when you do get started with Everbee, which I have a link to get started with Everbee for free in the description box below. But when it comes to Everbee's product analytics tool, what I can start to look at is some of the data behind some of these listings. And it's really just going through all of the listings that we saw on that first page of search, scraping all of the information so that we can see it in just a very clear, concise way. A lot of people who use Everbee like to filter these results by monthly sales or monthly revenue, just to get an idea of which listings are selling the most. But something that I really recommend for you potentially as a brand new seller or newer seller is actually scrolling over and filter by either listing age or filtering by shop age. The reason that I recommend that is I think it is just much more inspiring to look at listings in shops that are seeing the types of results that I might be striving for in my own shop. So that is a really great little hack. And of course, when you do filter by listing age or shop age, you want to also then compare to the listings that are seeing a lot of revenue. For example, this first listing here, it has an average of 179 monthly sales, over $6,000 in monthly revenue. The listing is only a month old and the shop is only four months old. This listing just a few lines down has an estimated monthly sales of 95, almost $3,000 in monthly revenue. Listing is only two months old and the shop itself is only eight months old. Finding these listings that are relatively new in shops that are also relatively new is a great way for you to identify potential areas of opportunity for you in your shop. 
Going back up to that first listing, if I click into it, this is for a Halloween sweatshirt, which totally makes sense as I'm recording this video, we have Halloween coming up. And so naturally there are going to be tons of Halloween themed listings that are just doing really well on Etsy right now. To get an understanding of where the demand is coming from for this particular listing, I like to jump into the tags and I'm gonna just enlarge these and we will open this up so that I can see the keyword score. Something that jumps out to me right away at the bottom, we can see that this keyword has a keyword score of 100 and it's kind of a funny keyword, probably a keyword that you wouldn't think would be in demand and would be high search volume and not a ton of competition. Um, but people apparently are looking for some witchy shit and some witchy gifts. So, with that being said, that is something that I could pull inspiration from because I can tell you right now, I probably wouldn't have thought of that just off of the top of my head. So that's where having a tool like Everbee can be super helpful in identifying where there might be demands that you're completely unaware of. When you see little snippets of this research in videos of mine or maybe other creators that you're watching, of course a video is gonna show a condensed form of what that research looks like. And research is probably where, or not even probably, research is absolutely where I spend most of my time. And the print on demand sellers who are seeing the most success in their businesses are also devoting a lot of time to research. That research is going to help you understand demand so that your listings are going to be what people are looking for. The second thing that print on demand sellers are doing is exploring new product types. Now, this is not to throw any shade towards apparel or mugs or, you know, just some of the classic product types that we often hear about. I personally sell apparel and that's one of my top selling product types. So I don't think that apparel or some of those more common product types are necessarily a bad thing to explore, but I do see a lot of new print on demand sellers leveraging the opportunities that are available with new product types that are just not nearly as competitive quite yet, but still being searched for and in demand. Just taking a look inside of Printify's catalog, looking at their new arrivals, they have tons of new really cool product types. One actually that I haven't actually seen yet until just this moment right now, and that is a pickleball kit. That is really cool. It looks like it's something that you're able to create the design for the paddles and it comes with two balls. So that's pretty cool. I've never played pickleball, but the gym that I go to, they have a, they call it a pickle factory actually. It's kind of funny, but it is uh, very popular and I, always been wanting to try it. So maybe that's something that I might do a little DIY for myself and order. And I'll share with you if I get a sample and what that sample looks like. They also have candles and phone cases. Wall calendars here are a really cool product type. And especially as we're nearing the end of the year, in the new year, most people are looking for a new calendar. And so that could be a really cool opportunity to leverage the demand for individuals getting their new yearly calendar. This is another one that I haven't seen before. It is a flask. My first thought process is a bachelor party gift. That is a keyword phrase that actually, if we jump back over into Etsy, if I just type in bachelor party, the keyword phrase bachelor party favors is something that has over a thousand monthly searches. So that is something well searched for in demand. And I think that offering this product type as a bachelor party favor could be a really cool idea. There is so much more, but truly the print on demand sellers who are seeing a lot of success this year are leveraging these new opportunities really in combination with what we mentioned first, which is demand. Strategy number three that successful sellers are doing this year is leveraging personalization. I don't think this comes as any surprise. This has been a big topic this year. A lot of print on demand sellers who are seeing success and growth are leveraging personalization in their products. Definitely something that I have mentioned before, but it is such a great way to stand out amongst competition in the e-commerce space, whether you're selling on a platform like Etsy, as I do, or if you're also expanding into Amazon, as of recently, you can now actually integrate Printify products to Amazon. That's a huge other opportunity. And I have a few videos about that new integration that I'll link in the description box below for you to check out. But leveraging personalization is now the easiest thing to do because of softwares like Hello Custom. 
Hello Custom is actually going to automate the personalization process for you when it comes to the products that you're creating. So if a factor such as time has been something that's prevented you from offering personalized products in the past, then I would highly encourage you to check out Hello Custom because it will save you the time and automate it for you. Personalization is something that can be done in a very simple way, such as just adding a name to a product or having the ability to add a date for maybe something like an anniversary. Hi, it's me here. I just wanted to say that I just confirmed that I still have a lifetime access link to Hello Custom. So if you're interested in Hello Custom, there is a link in the description, at least at the time that I am recording this right this moment, it is still active and it is still able to get you lifetime access to Hello Custom. So you only pay $67 and you have it for life. So if you're interested, check that out. Number four, sellers are expanding their reach. What I mean by this is a few different things. Some print on demand sellers are expanding their reach by hopping off of Etsy, not getting rid of their Etsy print on demand businesses, but expanding their Etsy print on demand businesses and bringing those products from Etsy to new platforms such as Amazon or even making their own website with Shopify. These are two really great ways to start increasing your earnings potential by reaching new audiences or even larger audiences. Of course, this includes learning new platforms. So it's something that isn't necessarily always going to just be immediate reach and immediate success. It's going to take time, just like it takes an Etsy shop time to build momentum and build success. But I think it's still a really great opportunity that I wanted to address because I work with a lot of individuals who have seen success on Etsy and are ready to take it to the next level. And oftentimes that looks like jumping to Shopify or Amazon. I actually have one student in particular who had something super cool happen. They had a product that was doing really well for them on Etsy and they decided to push that product into Amazon as the new Printify Amazon integration launched. And that product that has sold well for them on Etsy actually saw its first sale within the first 48 hours of pushing it onto Amazon. And really they didn't do anything different. They reused the same SEO and a lot of those same existing strategies that they were familiar with and were able to increase their earning potential right away. But I just thought it was so cool that they saw a sale with their Amazon account so fast. The fifth strategy that successful sellers are doing is they are running ads, which I know it's not the sexiest thing in the world to think about running ads and spending money and a lot of people aren't interested in hearing about it. But hear me out. Let's talk about the life cycle of a listing on Etsy and why running ads can be so beneficial. When you list a product on Etsy, Etsy is looking for interaction on that listing and how it is interacted with ultimately determines how much it gets pushed into their algorithm and in front of more people and in front of more eyeballs. If your listings are starting to get more clicks into them, Etsy is going to want to continue to promote that listing because it's showing interest or customers are showing interest in your product. For those customers that are clicking into your listings, if some of those customers also decide to favorite your listing, that also is a form of interaction that Etsy is going to like to see and want to continue pushing that product as well. The third thing that you can see on your listings, of course, would be getting a sale. That would be the ultimate form of interaction that Etsy really wants to see. And by seeing all of these types of interactions on your listing, Etsy is going to want to push your product out more and more and more, the more positive interactions it receives. Now, where do Etsy ads come into play here? Etsy ads are going to help increase this interaction phase because you are going to be pushing your product in front of more people and getting more interactions. Now, if you're running Etsy ads and you're not seeing a lot of views on your listings and you're not seeing any clicks and interactions that Etsy wants to see, that's your sign that you need to go back to the drawing board to some regard. You might have to rethink your SEO, rethink your design, your listing images, pricing. There's something that is not getting a customer interested in your product. And so going back to the root is what I'm going to recommend when you have that scenario. 
I have quite a few videos on my channel discussing Etsy ads and my strategies with Etsy ads. So I will have those linked in the description box below. And be sure to turn on the notification bell because the next video that you're going to see, I actually invited Hannah Gardner to come onto my channel and we basically went through an entire masterclass. This is going to be a long video. If you aren't familiar with Hannah Gardner, she is another creator here on YouTube who is extremely successful on Etsy and in the e-commerce space. If you've been wanting to learn more about Etsy ads and kind of the data side of Etsy ads, that is going to be such a great video for you to check out. So just a little uh, be on the lookout for that video coming up soon. Or maybe if you're watching this video in the future, then that video is probably already out and I will have just added the link to it in the description. Let me know in the comments down below which of these strategies you're most interested in, understanding demand, exploring new product types, leveraging personalization, expanding your reach, or running ads. If you found value in this video, don't forget to give it a like down below. And as always, I hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.